Welcome to everyone. It's my pleasure to be here today. I wanted to let you know that I am working in collaboration with Living Education to present this coding update today. Respiratory is a handful this year. There's a series of cleanups and there's a series of new codes under the umbrella of nasal sinus endoscopy. Now remember the endoscopy, uh, well, the, there's anatomy. I think I have a picture. I think I meant to bring a picture in here. Yes, later on. But the first cleanup happened in the paragraph before the four diagnostic endoscopy codes that provides guidance about what to do. Well, first of all, what's included in a diagnostic endoscopy, nasal endoscopy, and that's listed on the bulleted section of the slide. But what's been added this year is what happens if the doctor doesn't look at all four of those particular cavities. And what they've given us as guidance is using modifiers. They said use modifier 52 to do services if a repeat examination is not planned. So the doctor didn't look at all these areas, but for some reason, just the way it is, and I have to put a 52 on it. Now, if they plan on coming back and having a repeat exam, this is all driven by documentation, then 53 is the modifier you use, which is for discontinued services. Now, that's just the beginning of the focus on the nasal endoscopy codes. We have a new code, ligation of the phenopalatine artery, code 31241. This code, and you can see where that artery is back there, it's, it's for controlling severe epistaxis. And it's a posterior type of um, epistaxis you'll see in the documentation. Be cautious because there is another code in this series, family of codes for control of hemorrhage. And there's a note that tells us do not code that code with this code. They expect that the 31241 will take care of the nasal hemorrhaging, so it's overcoding if you use both. Now to the one that I think is going to be sticky this year, and these are the ethmoidectomy codes. And here's a picture of what an ethmoidectomy looks like on the web. And this is, if you want to follow along, I'm, I'm starting the series of codes, family codes that begin with 31254. These are all ethmoidectomy codes, and they're anchored with ethmoidectomy, and the procedure is, uh, is differentiated by partial versus total. And you can see that they often use this uh, intervention to remove damaged tissue or some bone that blocks the natural drainage and, or to widen the passage. Now, if the, if the doctor does not document that an ethmoidectomy was done, then this is not your range of code. You're going to go somewhere else if it's frontal or maxillary. This is all ethmoidectomy and then what's indented underneath there. I'm going to look on the next slide. I'm going to show you what that all looks like. So you're going to have to review the, doc, review the documentation for ethmoidectomy and then to see if they just operated on the front portion, the interior, or they reached in the back, did the posterior, and then worked their way up to the anterior, which is called a total. Oops. I usually don't like to throw this much on a slide, but I wanted to point out to you the differentiation between the codes. So I used the red font and the underlining so that underlining so you can see what the difference is. So partial ethmoidectomy at first glance, this looks an awful lot like last year's code, but you're going to see there's a subtle change. They moved the semicolon. It used to be behind surgical, it's now behind ethmoidectomy, which means that all the codes here have to have ethmoidectomy built in. The partial is 254, as you see that. 255 is total anterior and posterior, which I described on that last diagram. These codes are out of order. Uh, it's not me, just the way they are in CPT. I, I hate, I guess the angle part of me hates to see these out of numeric order, but this is the way it is. 31253 is not only a total ethmoidectomy, but now the physician has reach into the frontal sinus area and either exploring or taking tissue or both. If the physician goes into the sphincter and makes an incision, and that's usually a surgical opening to the sphincter sinus, 
then that's your code 31257. And then if the physician takes tissue, then that would be the other code, 31259. So this builds. Obviously, if you do the frontal and the sphenoid, then you're going to have more than one code. You're going to have to pluck the codes that apply to the documentation. Now, I wonder why they changed it. I thought it was a good cleanup. And according to AMA, a survey identified that these family codes were potentially misvalued. Now a sticky point pertaining to this, and we're building up into a coding poll question where you get to you get to code live. Let's let's look at what I call the not so helpful notes this year. As you know, in this section, they have uh, the series of codes, and they go between the different sinuses. And then they give you little scenarios. I always like those, and I anchor my coding decision every now and then when I get a little confused by those scenarios that say, if the doctor did this, this, and this, this is the code. So sure enough, I looked at the difference between 2017 and 2018 for an ethnoidectomy, anterior and posterior total, with a sphinctotomy, frontal final exploration, and I noticed that the guidance was the same, and I said, that can't be right, because we have new codes. So, I hate to break this to you, but this is going to be problematic. And I hope there's a errata soon. I would check Amy's website periodically. I know there's already one errata that's been issued. It's my understanding that they announced in the CPT symposium that some of the guidelines in the E&M section were going to be deleted, a couple paragraphs. That is not, I have not seen that in writing, so I did not include that in today's presentation. So it's dangerous to issue something that's just somebody telling me on the fly. I did not, um, that's not included. My best advice is to take time to apply these new codes and watch out for those notes that are not so helpful this year. If you're interested in a longer version of this, uh, Lumen Education, which has always been a great partner for me, I've developed a course, it's about two hours long, two CEUs, and it's going to uh, include more case studies, some operative notes for application of everything you've seen today, plus some more about parenthetical notes, and also some movies and videos that help the clinical piece of understanding these codes.